Okay, it's uh, seven o'clock. I'm gonna call the September 12th meeting of the Granby Planning Zoning Commission to order. Will you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll uh, check in with the commission. Uh, I'm Mark Locke with the commission chair. I'll start to my right. Eric Lukingville, member. Bob Lavitt, alternate. Eric Myers, vice chair. John Boardman, member. Christine Shane, member. Paula Johnson, alternate. I note that uh, Commissioner Shahan and P Peters are not in attendance and will be seating both alternates, which are here. So, welcome. Thank you. I'd like to also welcome everyone back. I know we had a break, but the summer was enjoyable for all okay next in our list is item number four public session items are not on the agenda or subject to a public hearing so anyone wishing to speak to us uh, please come forward hello everybody hi hello. Kate hi. Bogley, 198 r salmon brook street i'll apologize in advance for not writing out and i will try very hard not to ramble um uh, at the Board of Selectmen's last meeting, I came to them um, just to ask everybody to stay vigilant in trying to keep the construction in the center getting finished. Um, my concern at the when I went to the Board of Selectmen was the effect on the businesses in town. I mean, I don't know if, how much you have driven by, but the amount of time they've been parked in front of Beeman Hardware, I have no idea how they're still in business. And there are a couple of businesses that I rely on for my business that I would never want to see go out of business. I wasn't thinking at the time that school was starting in a week. Um, and so then I, I became very concerned um, about our kids traveling through the center intersection. Um, so I started talking to Mark Fiorentino about that, who has been incredibly responsive, and I really appreciate that. Um, so tonight I've come to you to hope to get you on my team, as I've been trying to get everybody. If there are enough squeaky wheels, I am positive we can make a difference in how fast um, these contractors pr get out of our lives here. Um, Abby knows that I've been, um, <laughs> she's been on, copied on emails. Um, so I've been contacting, you know, our state representatives, uh, DOT, all the people. So, so I'm not here for information on how I can contact, I assure you I have been. Um, I'll just tell you a little story about um, on Sunday I went for a run and it occurred to me that um, it had been raining, I didn't want to run through the grass, that in now in a quarter of a mile I can get on the sidewalks and I can run all the way on sidewalks up through the high school and then back to my house. So I thought that was a fantastic idea. Coming home from the high school, um, I almost got run into by a car. I was proceeding through the intersection going south, and the car um, that was in the far right-hand lane on Route 20, traveling west, was about to go right on red. I, I think that was his intention. Um, but you could tell that he was kind of confused, and he definitely wasn't looking in the crosswalk. I proceeded with the crosswalk signs. I was in the crosswalk and proceeded with the signs. I think it's very unclear. I'm not even sure that people are recognizing the crosswalk right now because it doesn't have the white lines marked on it. And it's very unclear about where to stop right now. And so the last um, comment I have is a question, actually, because Abby, sorry, I've been meaning to call your office to find out at that intersection, will you be able to go right on red or will it just be an arrow? Yep, so that is something that we had talked to DOT about. They were going to circle back with their design team. Originally, it wasn't in the plans to make that a no turn on red, but I do believe they are reconsidering that and it should be posted no turn on red, but I will confirm that with okay. them. So I will tell you that I proceeded through that intersection with all of the wherewithal of a 50-year-old woman who has been driving these roads and anticipating traffic for the past 20 years. 
if I were a 12 or 13 year old girl walking with my friend and I pressed the button and waited for the sign and the sign was go, I think I would have gotten run over that day. So I think it's imperative. And I know they couldn't come stripe it last night because it rained. But tonight would be a good night to do it before anybody gets hurt. So thank you very much for your time. I encourage all of you to write to the DOT, each and every one of you, as a concerned citizen of Granby. So thank you very much. Thank you. And I will listen to the I love your meetings. I listen to them for entertainment. I will be listening on YouTube at home. Thank you very much. You can stay. It's just me. Thank you. I know. I will be listening. Thanks, Kate. Hey, anyone else for public session? Not on Zoom? No. There's no one else for public session. We will close public session. And we'll move on to the minutes from, seems so long ago, of July the 11th. I took a look, but does anyone have comments? I don't think so. I don't think so. No, they look good. So if there's no comments, I'll take a motion to approve. So moved. Second. So I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Abstained? Motion carries to approve the minutes. <clears throat> Next is item number six, public hearing for application seeking a special <coughs> permit for an accessory apartment on Salmon Brook Street. Uh, Vice Chair Myers, could you please read the call to the hearing? Yes, sir. There will be a public hearing conducted by the PNZ on Tuesday, September 12, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Granby Town Hall meeting room, 15 North Granby Road, to hear and consider the following item. Application seeking a special permit under zoning regulations section 8.5.2 for a detached accessory apartment for property located at 380 Salmon Brook Street, R30 zone, file Z-16-23. At the hearing, interested persons may appear and written communications will be received. Copies of the proposals are on file in the community development office. Is the applicant to the representative here? Introduce yourself and address, please. Yes. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Cote, 380 Salmon Brook Street, Grand Connecticut, 00035. Yes, uh, we have some information, but if you could just give us a brief description of what you're looking to do, like to do. Sure. Um, I'll give you a little background. I've lived in Granby my whole life, so I've been here 35 years plus, and um, I bought a house. I'm a single mom. I bought a house. 10 years ago now, more than 10 years ago, I bought a house on Salmon Brook Street on the water um, at 424 Salmon Brook Street, loved my home there, um, was driving home one day from my kids' football at um, the high school and saw 380 for sale, and I wasn't in the market to buy a house at all. But when I saw it for sale, I thought, wow, look at the potential it has because there were four buildings on the property. And so um, I reached out, I purchased the property, went through the process and all that in hopes that um, I would be able to use it to support my family. Um, you know, there's a second house that's on the property um, that I had reached out to the previous renters who had lived in that um, apartment and reached out to them about it, and they loved living there, had no issues until the fire happened in 2008, so that was a long time ago, backstory in that place. Um, but I bought the property with the potential and the hopes of, you know, um, making it into a place where I could support my family. I'm paying a much larger mortgage on this house, sold my other house to fix this one up, and now the process, um, you know, just trying to go through the right process of getting it approved because I had no idea, even though I went to the town before I purchased the property because of the um, fire damage to the barn, I had gone through all of the files and everything before I um, bought it, before I closed on everything. And I saw that there were four or five permits that had been pulled on that back house. I saw that there was one pulled for the septic. I saw that there was some pulled for um, a couple other things on that house. Um, and so I had no idea that there was nothing, like that it wasn't allowed to be a building there. Um, so then when I went to um, Abby to apply for the permits to do, I think I 
originally was going to apply for windows because um, the windows were broken and I wanted to replace those first before any debris or anything got in over the winter. And I was told that I couldn't have an accessory dwelling there and that I needed to apply for this special permit. So I was extremely discouraged. Um, and so here I am today because I want to be able to do the, uh, not reconstruction, but like fixing of the, the house that's there. Yeah. So. Just when did you buy the property? I bought it in February of last year. Um, so for the first almost, I would say, so six months or so, I was trying to fix up the house that we're currently living in that's on the property, the, the large house. Um, my kids and I are residing in there for now. And then I ended up taking on a few extra children. I had three kids with me for the last year that were not my own. Um, and so a lot of it was put to the wayside for um, those purposes. My brother ended up moving in with me. My mom's been having a lot of health concerns. I don't know. Um, She's had three strokes and three open heart surgeries and adopted my younger brother who was still in high school at the time. So I got guardianship of him. And so um, I put a lot of this on hold during that time. Um, and then as soon as June hit and um, we had two foreign exchange students living with us and my brother moved out, he turned 18 and graduated. And so, um, but he's back with my mom again. But anyway, um, when that all kind of went aside, I was like, okay, now I can finally follow through with this process again, so. I just because I saw that it looked like in 2004, it hasn't been rented since then, I, I anticipate, because that's when there was a cease and desist letter, whoever owned it before you? Um, I believe someone was living there after that until like 2008 when the fire happened. But that's only based on um, people that I know that we're renting from there, so. For other questions, Abby, you have a comment? I know you had a staff memo. You want to maybe give some background mm -hmm. from the memo? Yeah, um, so just some additional information. Um, so the accessory apartment is proposed to be detached in a portion of the barn. So there are pictures included. Um, so there's um, it's kind of off to the southern side of the barn. So um, it would be just over 1,000 square feet, um, two stories. Um, there would be a door, and please correct me, um, that goes directly into the barn, and then also a rear door that goes into the backyard, at least shown on the plan. So it does have direct access to the outside. Um, it complies with the regulations in that it would have its own kitchen. Uh, there's actually two bathrooms shown, um, two bedrooms, living area, um, upstairs, kind of like a loft space. Um, as applicant presented, there is um, a second septic system on the property that is connected to the barn. Um, Farmington Valley did approve uh, the two bedroom accessory apartment for this property. They did note that um, if the well radius can't be uh, met, that required distance of a new, a new well might have to be drilled if the system ever has to be replaced. So that's, that's something the applicant is aware of. I had, um Jeff Spence came out and looked and checked that there is a separate well on that property, uh, I mean, on that dwelling. So there are two wells on my property, one for each of the um, homes, per se. Um, and the septic I just had um, checked by Small Town Septic. And my boyfriend dug it up, and we took the cover off, and. It, so there's two septics still working. Um, and I just, one last thing, there is adequate parking on the site um, for both the home and then the accessory apartment. As you said, it meets the other part of our reg, so. Uh, the references to the fire, was the, where you're proposing the building, the new uh, dwelling unit to be, where the fire occurred? No. no. 
Um, so the way that Abby described it is a little confusing because I think the way it's described in the memo is as if it's part of the barn. It's not part of the barn. It's actually a separate dwelling than the barn, but at some point someone connected this house to the barn. And so um, if you look at the original view, and I think you put the new one in the file, but if you looked at the view that was on the Granby website prior, or the whatever, the site that you looked at before um, I gave these photos, it was not connected. And I don't know what pic what year those pictures were taken, but it was a separate home. And now when they redid the roof, they were connected. The fire took place only in the barn. Um, it did not reach this home at all. Um, what happened to this house was that when the fire took place, from what I've been told from various contractors that I've had come out and give estimates, is that um, when they took water from the lake to put out the fire, that uh, it got a lot of water damage to this building. And so there was water damage to a lot of the drywall and some of the insulation had mold and things like that that I've been like taking out little by little on my own just because I didn't want more mold to saturate into the building. But um, that was the only damages to that building. All the framing is still there. I think I submit pictures. So it's framed. There's electrical still in there. Um, I took out only the insulation that like was moldy. But um, the everything is still there. It's just interior renovations. <coughs> Any, any questions? Feel free. I drove by today. Just I didn't stop. I went just went by slowly twice to see, and it looks like a, a very appropriate place to have an accessory apartment. Good question. What's going to be, what's going to be the uh, main entrance? The rear one? Um, so I park in the barn currently because of all the car break-ins and stuff. I open the barn door and I park in the barn. So there's a door that comes out of the barn, like a regular yeah. exterior door that comes out of the barn. And then um, there's about, I don't know, five or ten feet in between. And then you open another door to go into the house. So that would be the primary entrance. There wouldn't be one on the front, like facing the road. Eric, no questions. Right here. Yeah, I just um, whatever action the commission takes to approve it, or you just stating the obvious, but you still have to comply with Farmington Valley building inspector, finish it out. So, you know, if we approve this, it doesn't it doesn't circumvent that process. As yeah, well, as and I that. have the permit application and the check for the. Um, estimated cost of the like the bubble application, the blanket application. That's okay, but, yeah, I mean, do I submit that here? Or no, no, it's just something. Okay. okay. I don't know. So, yeah. I'm trying to do it right. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure Abby's explained to this. There's a bigger process. Oh, here. I know. Yeah, it's so, been a yeah. process already. <laughs> just getting Farmington Valley Health District to come out and look was a process. There's no other commission. I'll just ask if any uh, members of the public uh, would like to speak on the application, either here or on Zoom. Please make yourself known. Don't see anyone from Zoom. No one else here. Okay. There's no other. Anything else you'd like to add before we close? No, thank you. Are we commission good? All good. Yeah. All good. All right. Yeah, you Abby, you're good. Mm -hmm. Staff side. Yeah. Okay. All right, uh, we're going to close the public hearing. The commission has up to 65 days to make a decision. However, we have it on our agenda to discuss uh, here in a little bit as well. Okay, thank you. If you'd like to stay around, you may. If not, you can. So if I stick around, I'll know the answer now? Yes. Uh, yes, you will. <laughs> <laughs> I will wait all night. <laughs> okay. Uh, item seven, receive applications and schedule public hearings. Um, Abby, let me know what you had that came in. Yes, so after the agenda was published, we did receive one application for a special permit for one Broad Hill Road. Um, this is the tennis club over there. They're looking to install some pickleball courts, a horseshoe pit, um, and some other site improvements like 
uh, expand a parking area. Um, so that is a special permit for recreational use. Um, we don't have anything on for the next meeting in September, so it could be scheduled for hearing on that date um, if the commission is inclined, and that is September 26th, right? Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. yeah. Not sure. Good. Let's hear it. Anything else that came in? No, that's okay. it. So we'll schedule that public hearing for the next meeting. Um, I did mention to Abby and also our vice chair, I will not be here then, so Eric, you okay to? All right. Yes, sir. Good. Okay. Next on our agenda is item number eight. We have an informal discussion, uh, 18 Hartford Avenue for the Four Dads Pub outdoor dining area. I think, uh, um, I, I volunteer if you want to discuss this first so they can leave, that's fine. I don't mind staying. It's up to the commission. If you want to reorder the agenda, I mean, that's fine with, fine with me. I, yeah. All right, can I get a motion to reorder the agenda so, so we have item number so nine in place here? Second. Second. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion to second we'll move the agenda. So we'll move to no, item number nine, consideration of applications where the commission has concluded the public hearing. Um, I'll start. I uh, <clears throat> think the applicant is uh, trying to uh, rehabilitate the structure that was used and Whatever happened in the past, we're trying to rectify it, and the staff is, seems to be happy. They're meeting our regulations, and they will have to meet the building inspector, Farmington Valley Health, and all that, so I don't see any issues with it. I see, no, I see no issues. It was well presented, and I think it ought to be approved. The yeah. fact that the previous owner was a scofflaw doesn't affect my feeling about this application. They're trying to comply with their rules. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> well, with that, I'm going to offer a motion that we approve an application seeking a special permit under zoning regulation section 8.5.2 for detached accessory apartment for property located at 380 Salmon Brook Street, R30 zone file Z-1623. Second. 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 We have a motion. <laughs> we'll give a second here. <laughs> we have a motion and second to approve the application as presented. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Abstain. <laughs> the motion carries. Approved. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Now you have to go see Abby. <laughs> <Tomorrow. laughs> that picture of the circuit breaker box, it looked it's like there was a fire there. That's. I know, we shouldn't. Nope, we're done. <laughs> you can, you can know, ask later. No. <laughs> I'm just saying, get, get an electrician to look at that. Oh, it's I scary. got to electrical, I'm not trying to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's one thing I'm, I'm not going to touch. Yeah. My dad can. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, now we're back to uh, back to the agenda. We order agenda back to the informal discussion for 18 Hartford Avenue, Four Dad's Pub outdoor dining area. How are you guys? Just for the record, Great. please introduce yourself. Dante Buffy, Ford Ed's Pub, 18 Hartford Ave, Granby, Connecticut. All right. um, last time we met, it was like a Zoom call. Yes, yes. Yeah. This is nicer. Um, thanks for having the informal discussion. Um, what I'd like to do too is, is maybe, um, now that we're here, have the opportunity just to paint a broader picture on to what we'd like to do on the property and the outdoor dining we're discussing is those six picnic tables that were permissible during the pandemic, but, you know, Abby's been on me about those and said that that has come up, that those weren't actually part of the approved patio. Um, what, we're, what we're looking to, to gain here is to basically finish this season with those tables. Um, it's been an awful summer. It's rained basically three quarters of the summer and our outdoor season is what makes us. We're a tiny little pub. Um, without the outdoor summers, you know, it's tough to survive. So we have a plan in place to help that situation. Um, talked to the owner of the property, Gary Kevorkian. It was actually his idea. Um, he approached me last year about putting an addition on the building and, you know, I at the time said, yeah, you know what, it's Putting an addition on a building that you don't own is kind of throwing money away. Um, so Gary approached me again on St. Patrick's Day when it was packed to the gills and said, you know what, you, you really could use some more room. Um, again, I hesitated because knowing that, you know, the summers are booming, it's always nice out, the patio gives us what we need, and the winters we survive. So two things happened this summer. One, not only did the pandemic 
um, easements, whatever you want to call them, ended. But the Liquor Commission came back out and said that all the parking lot tables are gone. You can't do anything in the field anymore. So that, combined with three months of rain, was difficult. So it made me rethink putting an addition on the building. Um, if it's okay, can I just pass? There's just some, some rudimentary sketches just to kind of give you a, an idea. Um, the, the existing building that you, that you all know is this first piece, which will remain virtually untouched. Um, that's, about a, that's exactly a 600 square foot rectangle, 20 by 30. Um, what we're proposing is approximately um, a, a 500 square foot addition to take up the patio section between the house and the pergola, and then where those picnic tables are that are in discussion relocate that patio. And, and this would do two things. It would give us the proper ratio of square footage that the patio should be with the building proper. And um, the building owner has been toying with adding parking to this property anyway. And with this addition, would require some more spaces. Um, so in the field that we can no longer use for anything, we were using it for cornhole and disc golf and kids playing, we, we really can't use it now, so it makes sense to um, utilize that for some parking. So, you know, I've had some preliminary discussions with uh, building and fire, and they basically both said the same thing, kind of reiterated what you just told that young lady, um, go to planning and zoning, and then take the process through uh, the town. Um, what this addition would give us is additional square footage, so on these rainy days, on these winter days, we have plenty of indoor dining. Um, and on the nice weather days, it's something that we could open up to the patio and have sort of an indoor, outdoor space. Um, with that, out of that 500 square feet, we're looking at uh, giving about 100 square feet to the kitchen so that we can bring some um, pizza ovens in and, and do some of the pizza out of this location as well. Um, we love that spot. It's a nice little enclave. It doesn't border any residential. And, you know, we, we want to be there a long time. And we understand that, you know, you got to evolve and, and, and change to, to make it work. So really, as far as those six picnic tables, all I'm asking for is to the end of this season. If you'd allow us to keep them, basically, end of October, the outdoor season goes. Then we're going to take them all away. Hopefully, in October, we'll have plans presented to you, site plan, floor plans, architecturals, uh, to get the actual addition approved with the parking. Um, in that whole uh, gambit, um, I know our dumpster situation needs to be fixed. It, it's not through lack of trying. We have had the contractor out there three times. He was just there yesterday. Materials are ordered. He has promised me it'll be done within the week. Um, if anybody knows Brody and Jason Land here, they're, they're local. They do a lot of dirt biking in the summer. It's not an excuse, but they're gone all summer. He did get the dumpster up onto the pad with the two sides of the surround, and now he's coming back to finally finish it. Um, the one thing we don't have enough of is recycling. We just have one little push cart. So in this redevelopment, what we'd be proposing is to do, um, is to sort of turn that dumpster pad to the side so it's even less evident, um, but sort of double the width. So we'd have a full dumpster for trash and a full dumpster for recycling. Um, we have a lot of cardboard boxes, uh, a lot of glass. Um, so it ends up being thrown away, and we'd much rather recycle it than just include it as garbage. Um, so that would all be worked into the plan as well. Um, so I wanted to give you sort of a taste of the big picture, um, and basically the, the six picnic tables, that's where families come, that's where people take their little kids to, to play in that little forest area, that's where the dogs put their little water bowls down, that's where the little league teams come after practice. Um, so losing that even in this next month would be awful, um, especially since we haven't really used the patio nearly as much as we have in past years, just simply because the weather's been absolutely awful. Um, so that's, that's kind of, in a nutshell, what we're talking about.
just for purposes tonight, uh, you know, this is an informal hearing. And the commission's not making any decisions or any applications. So if I understand correct, you're asking for two things, just to look at the picnic tables and also just the general concept of, of this. Is that correct? Correct. And I'll, I'll, uh, I think maybe we'll start with uh, you know, the, the outdoor thing first. And, uh, uh, and I'll, I'll ask Abby some questions because as, as I'm sure you're aware you're here, we don't have a regulation that allows for the outdoor dining. You were under the uh, executive order. And then, is that correct, the prior? Mm -hmm. So um, is your ask tonight for that area to change our regulations or what's the specific request? No, the specific request is um, we're going to comply. Um, just set a certain time frame for us to comply. So what I'm asking for is it's the mid-September. If you said, you know, you have 45 days to clear that out, um, that would be great. That's kind of what I'm looking for, just a time frame set for me to clear. I'll ask Abby what the, you know, I don't think our regulations have that, but I'll, what's your side from staff looking at this? Yeah, so um, typically when we assign deadlines like that, it would be through a zoning enforcement um, action. So in other words, a notice of violation would be sent out. Um, it would give an applicant or a property owner X number of days to comply with the order or appeal to the ZBA. Um, that's one avenue in terms of the time frame. Um, the other one would be just applying to the ZBA for a variance. Um, however, there's really no hardship. Uh, there's nothing unique uh, to justify an increase in the percentage of outdoor dining beyond 40%. Or there's the text amendment option. Is there a, anything that regulates what kind of a time frame you give somebody in a zoning compliance uh, action? No, usually it's uh, a case-by-case -case basis. So you could say um, 45 days if you wish? Mm -hmm. But that would be part of the enforcement process, not something not a, That's something we do, yeah. Correct. Yeah. Um, yeah. Can we request um, or give the um, suggestion to the zoning mm -hmm. officer that we'd like to see it gone by the 1st of November, however it works? And I, I think that they're looking at, from a text amendment standpoint, to expand the outdoor dining. Um, I think the commission, and you stated a little bit, you started off with a very small indoor. I, mean, I think members of this commission, and I'm not, I have to go back and look at the tape, I still call it tape recording, uh, expressed some concerns. And you've been spilling out. Sure. Okay? And you know that, that's your business decision to have the small place, but you started here, here, and executive order in the parking lot, and you know, from a text amendment standpoint, you know, if we approve this, it goes to all restaurants. And, and I don't see myself, that's not something I would be pursuing as a text amendment myself to expand. And I don't think you're asking for that. No, no. I understand yeah. that. I understand. And so the other, the other ask you have is to, I, from a commission standpoint, and Abby, I look to you to do the other commissioner sign along. I don't think there's anything we, you know, in a formal hearing, I can't give you guidance our regs don't have a provision for it unless we go with enforcement action, right? And that's something with staff. Sure. Yes. Um, you know, on, on your other, I have concerns. Uh, I'll be very open. Um, times I've been over there, your dumpster issue is not a temporary thing. That thing was outside. I mean, Commissioner Myers, I remember he approved the bigger thing in 2020, whenever we did the expanded, and it was sat outside of there for years, a couple it, years. It did. No, no excuse. It did. Right? And, You've had people in the parking lot drinking garbage litter. Um, you know, I'm talking about your expanded thing here. Um, you don't have to answer this question, but I seriously doubt your outdoor music meets 50 decibels at your property line. I've heard people can hear it on Canal Street. Um, so I think I have some concerns about expanding your operation in general. I'm just going to ask, turn it over to the commission because that's you know, this is informal things. Sure. I'm just giving sure. you my take if you want to expand. The other part, I'll have the commission give some other comments. I have to say, I share the chairman's concerns. I mean, you came here for a special permit, we gave it, and it seems to me you've been operating outside the parameters of it basically since we gave it to you. 
So it's a concern of mine that you're now asking us to expand it when you have not shown us that you're willing to live within the parameters we originally granted. I, and, you know, talking about hardships, I think, I think most of our time we were under pandemic rules and pandemic um, afforded us some luxuries that aren't, don't exist anymore. Um, and the place, I, to my knowledge, up until this summer, am, am I right, had no issues except for the dumpster, which I know. And the dumpster was something that we checked the size with the dumpster company. They told us exactly how big to build it. We did, and it didn't, didn't work. They, they busted the thing the second time they tried getting the dumpster in it. Um, you know, I think we've been a pretty good community neighbor. Um, we we got some complaints that first year, but I, I know Abby's been down there to check on the music level. Um, you know, it's mostly mostly positivity and happy people when they're there. And I, I haven't gotten any complaints from the neighboring commercial properties, unless you guys have that I don't, that I haven't well, There's happy of. patrons, but you know, I know there's unhappy people that live, um, I think it's on, what's not, Canal Street and Hungry Road. I mean, they, I've seen them at parks and stuff. They can hear your music. And that's, I mean, I'm not, we're not here to give you enforcement or something. This is informal. Right? So I hear those comments when I'm out in town. Sure. And a lot of people don't like to make a formal complaint, but they complain to me. I'm an elected official for them, right? They're representing them. And, and it's a concern. And I've been by your place and it's loud. You have some. You have some rock bands. You guys like rock music. I like rock music. But one of the things that this edition does allow us to do is put those bands inside. Yeah. Which so greatly reduce the outside sound for sure. So my comment with all that is, if you want to go for the expansion, consider that right as 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 you go forward. If you want to do the entertainment, where are you going to put that? That that's right. some you know my opinion. Right. It's not the commission's view or anything. This is my opinion. I will say too, we were the first people to do music in town, and now just about every venue in town does music of some type. Um, I think it's a pretty positive thing overall. Well, I, I think we all want to encourage business in town, but that business has to know its limits and what it can do um, that will fit within the regulation and the intent of the regulation. I know we drove in one time kind of by mistake. And actually, it was a, a band that was playing that was a friend of our son's. And it, my husband, I went in there and looked, and it was, you know, people in the, in the parking lot and having a wonderful time. We saw some young that we knew. And my husband went into Beeman's, and you could, it was absolutely like they were right next door. So the music it has been an issue. There are some bands yeah. that are absolutely yeah. louder than others, and we keep those to a minimum. Um, if I can speak to the 50 decibels, that's insane. It's nobody's fault. It's just 50 decibels is conversation. 50 decibels is less than cars driving by us on the street. Lawnmowers are 90. Um, 18 wheelers passing by are in the 80s. What we found through every time a band plays, we use the decibel reader. I go to CBS, I drive to Geysers. What we found is that between 70 and 75, it's loud enough so that it's enjoyable, but it's not so loud that it's shattering glass and you can hear it on Canal Street. When it gets into the high 80s and 90s, we do tell them to turn it down. That's usually right when they start. But 50s, you can't, you can't have people talk on the patio and you're almost at 60. So I don't, I don't know what the answer is to that, but no one is at 50. You know, when they play at the, the barn or, you know, when, when they play at any other place in town, it, it's not even close to 50. If I can just address that, because um, it's been some time since that regulation was adopted when we looked at outdoor music. Um, for the commissioners who were sitting uh, on the commission during that process, that was something that was discussed at length. Um, and I think the intent was that it would be background music and that folks could carry on a conversation um, because it was acknowledged that if it was louder than that, um, it would turn what is background entertainment into more of the focal point, which I don't think was the intent with allowing music as an accessory use to a restaurant. That's my um, recollection. Yeah. 
It's my recollection as well. Absolutely. We clearly thought that background level was all we were interested in approving, and anything louder than that, we thought it had to comply with the 50 decibel rule, and if it did not, it would be subject to enforcement. And I, I have heard from friends of mine, and I have personally heard the level of, of the noise, and I guess I'm a, as big a rock fan as anybody else. Too loud. I don't. That's not what we had in mind when we approved it. It's that to me. It's it's fairly simple. I think if you don't like the 50 decibel rule, you should bring in a petition for us to change our regulation. See how you do. Because it was not meant to be an event <clears throat> where you have rock bands and loud music, where it can be as loud and the louder the better. I guess I don't go to those, but that's what it seems to be. It's supposed to be, as Eric said. Background to dining. So again, with your concepts, you know, on this one, you know, I think you're hearing. I think in the concept is good. I think yeah. making your uh, this, is my opinion again, and the commissioner's coming, is is good. Um, and you just have to see how far your outdoor you're going to have stay within our regulations, and I get to look at. If you're going to continue doing any music outside, I think you're going to be heard from several of us, and, and we've heard from the public. And uh, you know, the litter control, you, know, you said you're already working liquor control and other things. It's outside of our purview, but um, you know, I think there's a concept to there, but there's some other issues to work on. And, and I do think it, that's one of the things this does address. It, it's big enough venue in that room that we can put these larger bands inside instead of outside. And outside can remain the solo or the duo acoustic guitar. Who are, you know, if we have four bands in a week, three of them are, are that. We will have one sort of marquee band in the week. Um, and it does. It draws a lot of people and keeps us afloat. But now we could do it inside rather than outside. I think as Commissioner Lucanbeal said, if you, you know, don't like the limit, you should come back to us because that's what's in the regulations, and we have to follow the regulations, I'm right? sure. I think, too, when, when, you know, at the beginning, no one knew what the hell 50 decibels was, really, you know? No, it's pretty <laughs> when we clear get out there. Is. I yeah. think we mentioned yeah. it on the record what it was, so right. it's pretty clear what it is. Um, getting back to, again, uh, yeah. your, yeah, your sure. um, outdoor dining area, if you're not looking to do a text amendment, I don't know if there's any guidance the commission can give you because uh, I don't see any avenue in the regulations unless they want to work with, would it be an issue with the zoning enforcement officer? Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, you? so um, the zoning enforcement officer would have to issue uh, a formal letter, uh, so a violation letter stating that the site is not in compliance um, and then giving X number of days to bring it in com into compliance um, or notifying that you know failure to do so will result in fines or further enforcement action in consultation with the town attorney. Is that it's great? All right, so again, we're, we're not making a decision no, today. No, it's no, just we're, we're, um, we're, um, I, you can have further discussions with staff. That's on right. It. Um, Abby had intimated that some of the concerns over these tables was coming from the commission, so I figured it was a good idea to come to the commission and speak about it. Um, but that's fine with me. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if you wanted to look for a text amendment to the regulations to add it, that would be a different process, right? No. And, uh, no, but I, if it's I, mainly I to finish the season out, um, you know, I would uh, you know, work with uh, both both Abby and our, our enforcement officer. They're, they can work with you on getting so, it. So it's it's addresses any concerns from the commission to the regs and addresses your concerns of finishing out the season. I do think the addition, uh, you get a chance to speak to it, um, solves a lot of your problems. It increases yeah. your di inter indoor dining square footage, which vis-a-vis -vis may give you the opportunity for a more outdoor square footage. It also gives you an inside area to control the noise. And uh, right. I guess uh, my advice would be if you come back before us for an application for an addition indoor, you uh, have the dumpster in good working order before you come. <laughs> I'm going to send you all pictures next week when it's completed. Yeah. And I, I would like to ask quick question. So looking at the new informal yes. sketch, uh, the new addition appears to uh, encompass all the way where the current pergola is. To the pergola. Uh, oh, not, 
not according to the one on file and the scale of this, no. What do you mean? It's very simple. You hold up the two and the new building goes to the far end of the pergola, not to the pergola. Can Looks I, like he's, got, got, the, help, he's got the three barrels right here, which is I, in the I, picture. So sketch-wise, your barrels. building the three barrels. is There's approximately the there. It goes up to three barrels. Right. Yeah, this this is, th that that initial drawing, I think, was the, the first one. So this is, this is two scale. Correct, but this is what was submitted. I know, but the numbers that are on file for the actual square footage match what's shown here. Okay, so this ramp and this ramp are... They, the they are, yes. Yes, the, the numbers are correct for that. It's just graphically, it, it is not. You don't intend to move the program. You're not Ergo moving. Okay. Ergo is standing. Okay, thank you. You bet. I said, if I Thank you. come back when um, if you want to do the application. So, yeah. Abby, the process for the applicant, obviously they have a building code, but if they want to do this, that requires a modification to the. Yes, it would be a special permit modification and site plan. So, if that's what you want to do, you can come back. You know, right. I think you heard there's some interest in, in that piece, and you can we'll we'll make sure the dumpster's done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks. 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 Anything else, Abby? For us? Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank Thanks you. for coming in. Thanks. Yeah, we appreciate, uh, Dante, that the discussion ahead of time yeah. was good. Yes. Well, I'm sorry. These informal discussions are good. Uh, I, appreciate you know. I appreciate the time. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. So we did that. So now we're on staff report. Anything of interest, Abby? I yeah, so just a few updates for everyone. Um, the Granber, Granby Center Advisory um, Committee is going to be kicking off at the end of the month. I um, was so looking forward to that, and thank you again, Eric, for volunteering yeah, for yeah. that. Exciting. Um, so we'll be sure if we get um, well, complete faith. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> All of the agendas will be posted online, so everything's accessible, um, and I anticipate we'll be providing updates, obviously, as we move through that process. Um, over the summer, uh, we did several site inspections out um, at Station 280. Um, so the site work is moving along. They have the first course of pavement in, all the drainage is in, uh, retaining walls, some fencing, um, sewer pump station is in. They're just waiting on some parts. Um, so we did approve uh, first bond reduction for some of that site work. Um, and as obviously you can see, you know, building construction is well underway. Um, a few months ago, or maybe it was a month ago, uh, the building official, myself, and um, fire marshal met with them to talk about um, certificate of occupancy. So it looks like they're tentatively planning um, on this winter to get some units online. Um, so it is um, starting to move along pretty well. Um, in August, I did a final site inspection for Martha's Way. So all of that site work um, is completed. Um, we're in the process of releasing the bonds for that. So I don't know if the commission has had an opportunity to drive through there, but um, I think it looks really nice with uh, how that project came out. And I understand they have, um, they're working on a similar one in East Granby now. Um, Harness Way is under construction. Um, the first course of pavement is in. They've uh, obviously the landscaping in the front. They've done some additional landscaping throughout the site. So we'll be monitoring that to make sure that it survives. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how many homes were issued certificate of occupancy. I want to say six or seven, somewhere in there. Um, there are some more under construction. Um, so that project is also moving along well. I have a couple of questions on Martha's. Mm -hmm. So we've had no shortage of heavy rain this year mm -hmm. um, with some storms of biblical proportion. Mm -hmm. And uh, I drive by there frequently. Um, after one of the more significant delusions we had, four to five inches in a very brief period of time, mm -hmm. half that site was underwater. Um, when you go in off their main entrance and you go straight around the loop, that first straight way dips significantly. Yeah. And I know there's culverts in there. That was under every bit of three feet of water. You could not go through there with a car. And I think all the culverts are plugged. I don't know where they go. I don't know if they've addressed that or if they're yeah. changing the grading or landscaping because there's this 
sick. You really don't notice it when it's dry, but when it was wet, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a pond. Yes. Um, and the house that, whatever house is unlucky enough to go in that spot, will have a front yard of water if the situation stays the same. And then combination with that, I don't remember the specific engineering design of the front culvert that's out by the road mm -hmm. to collect um, a lot of the water that's probably coming from the on-site drainage system. The drain that's in the bottom of that, to drain it, is like three feet high. So that thing is always mm -hmm. wet. And yeah. is, it, is that supposed to be that yeah. way? So with that front basin, the town engineer has been in touch um, with them because it will require some modifications. I do know that there's some erosion, there's a lot um, of erosion. when you yeah. face it on the west side. Yes. Yes. Um, and they might have to dig out the bottom to make sure that it, it is infiltrating. But it is intended to to store some water, to store some right, water. And then go through what, the drain. What, what's I guess it probably should have been more tentative when the engineering plans are on, but what's the purpose of that when there's an actual storm drain to take water off site under the road in in towards the same of tributaries there? Yeah, so it's obviously to detain some on site or retain some on site. Um, I'd have to look at the exact plan though, Eric, to be able to answer more. It just looks like a giant mosquito pond to me. Well, it's supposed to capture sediment, so it doesn't go inside. I, I, I get some sediment, but we're talking and uh, I like will, eight feet of sediment. I'll have the town engineer look at the rest of the site, but I will say so. Um, they've only have the first course of pavement in, so the second course hasn't. So the catch basins aren't flush with the road. Um, so I, so it won't be able to drain into the catch. Okay. Like, I don't know if you noticed that in the center that happens yes. a couple times where it was. Um, and then also some of them do have um, silt sacks in there uh, to prevent sediment from getting in during construction. So some of them are actually okay. plugged, which is intentional. But it sounds um, like some of the issues have been detected. You know, yes. Yeah. Okay. And certainly as that, you know, will become a town road, um, you know, we are making sure to inspect it. Um, we'll need final sign off from their engineer as well. Um, so we are on it for that one. When will the striping be done in the town center? Yep, so um, the contractor has been working to try and get safety markings out to do it. Um, it's my understanding that uh, it can be somewhat challenging with their schedule to get them out. Um, and the weather has delayed it, but they are making a concerted effort um, and staying on them to try and get them out here to finish it. So I don't have a, a specific date for you guys, but hopefully soon. Do, do they have a target date for finishing up the whole thing and leaving? So most of the work, uh, most recent update was at the end of October um, for substantial completion. Um, I believe some items have been added to the job though, so the contractor might have to come back in the spring to finish up some like little things, but hopefully substantially complete by the end of October. Are they still planning on planting all the trees this fall? Last I heard, they are. yes. They are. Yep. Right. Um, but I will look into that to verify. Curious, and they did I mean, start um, planting some. Some, some are planting. Yep. I think they probably got a dozen, yes. and 10, something like that. I've seen them. Yep. So, so will they be striping the crosswalks? Because that is a concern. I, I certainly heard the, um, it's kind of scary if people are taking a left turn and you've got a crosswalk that doesn't look like a crosswalk and somebody who's from out of town isn't slowing down and looking. Yeah, I will, um, I'll check with DOT on that. Right, so obviously because they are the stamped yeah. concrete. It looks nice. Or stamped, yeah. you know, That's whatever. Um, I don't know if they're going to be outlined I'm with like a solid yeah. bar or not, sure. so I have to look at that. Yeah. I've always thought there should be a no turn on red sign there when that woman was referring to. Yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, it is kind of awkward because you have to go straight for a little bit before actually taking right hand there. with the crosswalk there now. Um, My understanding is that it's been the whole center is going to be no turn on no red. Turn on red. Time to get through there. Yeah. I think it's also. Uh, oh, I understand. The citizens, people, I mean, driving is a little bit of a psychology. People aren't used to seeing people walking in the center. I mean, I, I rarely, even before the construction, it's not. Now, with um, the development you know, of the Station 280, we have more people, the yeah. center committee. You know, I think people are going to have to be aware, whether it's the signage or some awareness that there's but that people are using the center. We want them to be walking the yep. center, so yes. uh, I'm glad to see that the crosswalks, there's a couple of crosswalks. In fact, 
we even on um, station 280 asked them to put in um, a crosswalk for the access to the school so mm -hmm. when they get done make sure you don't forget to remind them uh, for that so I think pedestrian use is going to be more and people are going to have to start looking out for it it's going to take some attitude adjustments on the part yeah. of our yeah. drivers yes, uh, yes. yes. I yeah, help myself in that group, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People are used to just whipping right through that intersection. Yeah. There's no question. Abby, also with regard to the, the center progress, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure the DOT has a punch list a mile long to get done with little things. The, can, can you find out if readjusting the traffic lights to line yes. them up with the lanes is, is on the list? It because, is on the list. Because some of the lights, I yes. took a picture at night, are comically on a line. Yes. Like, yeah, it's really confusing. Like, like the, 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 the best are the, when you're on Route 10 headed towards Southwick and you want to take a left on to, to 20, come up by the town hall. Yeah. All three of the lights are in the other opposing traffic. They don't even line up with the... Uh, they're yes. not even on the right side of the department. No, they're not even on the right side of the road. They're I, all... Yeah. I actually think <laughs> they're tentatively scheduled to come out on the 15th, so I think on Friday, uh, yeah. to start working on some of that. Line them up. That's what they said, yeah. Okay. So it is, yes. It does it create is, some confusion, because often you might be sitting in a lane that does not have a light in front of it. Yeah. You're looking up and... Yeah. But I will say, even with the confusion, it's, it's great. It's been better. It's oh, been yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. The traffic pattern when it's done. It's they, what they've done is they've done. added capacity to go through on a green. Every is, day I come home from Hartford um, on Route 20, and I was used to the long backup by Geisler's all the way to Canal. That does not happen anymore. There's no more queuing, uh, which is fantastic. Yes, right. that is great. That alone is huge. Yeah, that and the roundabout in the north end have been two good things. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of naysayers in town about that roundabout, but I love it. I love it too. It's fantastic. There. It works. Anything else? Right? No. Um, commission reports. I mean, just reported. I'm going to do my broken record, and if you haven't done your training, please do your training. I have to. Otherwise, we'll schedule a session here of training one night. Yeah. If you guys, if that's due by the end of the year, right? Yes. yes. Okay. I know uh, Paula just finished it. Yep. And but I did. I did mine. Yeah, I've done mine. Yeah. So yeah, I got uh, continuing legal education. You did too. Yeah. So, you tell me how you did that. They said I couldn't get it. You could. No, I asked. Oh, I, All right, we'll go talk offline. Mine. <laughs> mine was done by. Um, you went to the, it was the all day, right? Yeah, it was the all day thing. Yeah, I'll talk to you later about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because you did that too, Mark. Yeah. 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 Um, and then you get credit? So okay. any, oh, any, wow. get credit for that. any other commission yeah. information? All right, so our next meeting will be the 26th. Uh, so okay. I won't be here. If anything else comes up, Abby, just let me know when we work there. So if there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? We are adjourned. Aye.